Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We for the Lord and say thank you. Open your mouth and say thank you to him. We lay our crowns. We have come to worship you. We have come to worship you, God. We have come to worship you, Jesus. We have come to worship you. Jesus, and worship you, hallelujah, oh glorious God, say, glorious, yeah, we lay a crown, and worship you, one more. name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hand together please. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning Trinity Chapel Riru. Good morning TCR. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord this wonderful morning? Come on, turn to your neighbor, high five your neighbor, welcome them in the house of the Lord. And as we normally do, tell them, testify to them how your week has been, how has your week been, what has the Lord done to you. Come on, I can't hear you sharing with your neighbor what has the Lord done to you this wonderful week. Do we have a reason to praise the name of the Lord this wonderful morning? Hallelujah. We want to sing a song. We want to sing a song that we sang here some time back. The song goes like, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me hear you say, Chanzo. Hallelujah. Are we ready to praise the name of the Lord? Come on, find some space. Come on. 
Rudisha Sifo
Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. You, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. We worship Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and Jesus. begin to worship. Hallelujah. Even without the song, you can worship. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. We are here for you, Lord. We are here to prayer, worship you, Jesus. We are here for 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 you, Jesus. Just to worship Him.
you this morning. We magnify your name this morning. You are worthy of all our praises, Lord. None compares to you, O oh God. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, uh, the book of Psalms 100, verse 1 to 5 says, shout for joy to the Lord, church, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness this morning, Trinity Chapel Roiro. Come before him with joyful songs. I know, know that the Lord is God. We are declaring that everything in Ayayuka is God of all. It is he who made you who is here this morning. And we are his. You are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates, therefore, Trinity Chapel, this morning with thanksgiving. No matter what you're going through, exalt him for who he is and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him this morning, 10th of November, and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So I don't know what's going in your heart as we read this scripture. As the song is saying, everything bows down to God. Diseases, strongholds, cycles, anything you can think of bows down to Christ in the name of Jesus. And I want you to declare this over yourself, over, over, over our church, 
over our community. Exalt the name of the Lord that everything in your life will recognize the power of God and who he is. Every other idol will bow down before God in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we choose to magnify your name, O oh God. Lord, we come into your courts shouting for joy this morning. We magnify your name, O oh God. You are Lord of Lords. There is none like you, Jesus. Oh God, we exalt you this morning. No other compares to you, Jehovah. We magnify your name, Jehovah. Jehovah, Lord, you are worthy of all our praises. We thank you, Lord, this morning. We are reminded of your faithfulness in my own life, Lord, as a church, oh Jehovah, Father. Indeed, it is you, oh God. You are God of lords, oh Jehovah, Father. No other is like you, oh God, in heaven and on earth, oh Jehovah, Father. Even in our lives, oh God, none compared to you, Jehovah. Oh, Father, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. We enter your courts with thanksgiving, my God. We magnify your name, oh God, this morning. I still feel in my heart, some of us are carrying heavy, heavy burdens. And you need to speak by faith that everything will bow down in your life to this God, to God who is Lord of Lords, that there's nothing that will keep you captive. Therefore, you overcome because Jesus overcame. You walk out of here a winner, victorious, not because of your own power, but by the power of the living spirit in you, because of Christ Jesus. And I want you to still declare this by faith. Some of us are declaring it by faith this morning. In the name of Jesus, do not be quiet. Declare this over your family, over your friends, over our church, our children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Indeed, God, we say that everything, Lord, bows down to you, God. That every stronghold, every psycho, God, that is holding us captive, our families, oh, Jehovah, Father, our relationships, my God, us as a church, oh, God, our communities, we declare your victory, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. We adore you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jehovah. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. None compares to you, oh God. None compares to you, oh God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. This week as a church, we've had VBS. There's no way we can take it for granted that it was successful, that the Lord protected us as a church, the children, the pastors and facilitators, God was here. Children were ministered to. They received from the Lord. They even went for evangelism. Let's thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for what he did. Yesterday was evangelism. Four souls received Jesus. Thank God for what he has been doing. Let's thank the Lord this morning and what he's doing in our community in the name of Jesus. Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. We thank you for what has taken place, oh God, even for us as a church the past week. We thank you for VBS, oh God, that was successful, my Father. We thank you, Lord, for the team that you organized and the, the leadership of Pastor Joy, oh God. We thank you for every pastor, every associate, my God, that gave of their time, oh God, and even resources. Thank you for providing. Thank you for your protection, oh Jehovah, Father of our children, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this generation through this church, oh Jehovah God. We magnify your name. Name, oh God, let's not be quiet. Let's declare that our generation will honor God, that every seed that is planted will bear fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. They will be bold and courageous about Christ in their generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children will not be held captive by the things of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. They will be planted, oh God. They will be bold in Christ. They will stand firm in every Every season, if you don't have a child, declare it over your nieces, over our community, in the mighty name of Jesus, over your relatives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord, for your faithfulness, Jehovah. There is none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. 
We thank you, Lord. We are now in November and our this is the year of action. And I don't know, as we have been saying, that this is our year of action and that we are ordinary people who are powered by the Holy Spirit and responding in obedience so that we are able to impact our neighborhoods, our networks and nations. I'm not sure whether you have taken this to heart. I'm not sure whether you've just been taking this for granted and keeping quiet and listening to others. But I ask you to speak this by faith in your life. We are now in November. It will be so sad that 2024 ends and you remain the same, not knowing that you're powered by the Holy Spirit, that when you respond in obedience, you are able to be impactful everywhere God has placed you. Would you declare this over your life in the name of Jesus? This morning, ask the Lord to help your heart to be that good soil in the name of Jesus. That when his word is, is, is planted, that it will bear fruits. Let's speak this over our lives. That the Lord will not allow us. That even the someone we listen to today, oh, we will not live the same. We will not allow ourselves to be the same by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Let's trust this uh, even for our church in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that indeed it's the year of action, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that indeed we are ordinary people powered by the Holy Spirit, my God. We pray and I pray that you help me to walk in obedience, in surrender to your Lordship, oh God. Help us, Lord, and forgive us for where we have walked in rebellion. Repent for where you have walked in rebellion. Repent for where you have walked in disobedience. In the name of Jesus, Father, help us to not doubt your word. Help us, Lord, to believe and walk in surrender to your Lordship with what you have spoken and what you intend to speak to us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for yet another Sunday that you have blessed us with as Trinity Chapel Roiro. We declare that indeed, God, you are worthy of all our praises. None compares to you, O oh God. You are worthy. Heaven and earth bows down to you, O oh God. And we are grateful that you're, that you're here with us this morning. And you are in us, O oh Jehovah Father. What a privilege it is to get to worship and exalt you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. You've held us together from when the year started, January, February, March. You've been our restorer, our healer, our provider. You've done so much. Oh God, it's by your mercies not by our works. And so, Lord, we are grateful for this far. Your grace indeed has been sufficient, my God. We exalt you, God. We thank you for even the week we've had with VBS and even evangelism throughout the year and yesterday, my God. We thank you for the souls that have received you. We thank you for this great commission because we are powered by the Holy Spirit. And indeed, Lord, the conviction of seed will continue to take place even for our families, our colleagues, our networks, our neighborhoods, and even this community you've placed us at Trinity Chapel Roy Road. Thank you, Father, for this service. We want to surrender it to you, O oh God. We pray that, Lord, you take charge and authority of the word that will be spoken today. The Lord, our hearts will be that good soil where your word will bear fruit, much fruit and lasting fruit for your glory, dear Father. May none of us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, live here the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Hey, I'm seeing some people looking at me. Can you celebrate the Lord this morning in the mighty name of Jesus? Yes. Amen. We may have our seats. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, our praise and worship team. Uh, don't they look lovely? And the band, you continue to be a blessing to us. And we are grateful for you, Asante Nisana, for uh, blessing us this morning and allowing the Lord to use you. I would love to welcome each and every person that is watching us online. My name is Wamboi Winnie. I love Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I am truly nothing without, uh, without God. And I'm one of the pastors here. It's a privilege to be hosting us this morning. I would also love to welcome anyone that is visiting us. You're here 
uh, in church for the very first time at Trinity Chapel Rayro. Don't worry, we won't ask you to stand. We'll just ask you to lift your hand. The ushers are ready to give you something. Please, let's have anyone that is visiting us for the very first time. You've never been here to Trinity Chapel. Wow. Amazing. Karibuni sana. I can see several hands this side. Yes, I see them. Karibuni sana. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us this morning. It's a blessing to have you with us. Please don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. On my left, there's somewhere written Sebuleni. We are ready to host you, get to know you, pray with you, and also give you something yummy for your tummy. So don't give, don't leave us with the yumminess. Please ensure that you enter there. We are looking forward to hosting you. Actually, I remember my first time at Trinity Chapel Royro. My God, it's now 10 years. November 2024. I actually uh, attended service for the first time November 2014 at Trinity Chapel Royal. My God, it's been 10 years. But let me tell you the miracle and the testimony. I entered church when I was a depressed girl. I was suicidal. I was living in darkness, total darkness. You know, John 10, 10, where the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, that is exactly what was happening to me. But indeed, God is a redeemer. He's a restorer. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I look forward to sharing that testimony for anyone who wants to know. Please let me know. One more. What, what, what's that testimony? Let me know. God is faithful. So please visit us. Make sure you visit us. Uh, you come and join us at the Sebuleni tent. If you're seated next to a visitor, please don't allow them to leave. Say, you know, there's Sebuleni. Let me show you where it is. Yeah, Asante Nisana. So as a church, we have different ministries that grow us and equip us and help us to connect. And so one of the ministries that we have as a church is called Connect Ministry. And Connect Ministry has different programs under it. We have the pre-marital counseling classes that are for those who are dating with the intention of being of marriage. And then we have Plug-in, which is our 10-year, 10-week uh, week program that helps you to connect with God the community, the church, and your destiny. We also have man enough for the men. Uh, we also have divine for believers. It's a believers class, whether you've done it or even those who have just received Christ. And also, last but not least, we have Leah. Leah is for the parents. You get to be equipped, connect with other parents. And also, if you desire to dedicate your child back to God because they belong to God, it's also a class that you need to do. And so this morning, it's a special morning for some of our children and parents. We get to dedicate some little children. Let's celebrate the Lord for that. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. And so I'll go ahead and welcome Kendra Wangoi Mwangi. Woohoo! Kendra. Is Kendra here? All right. Miles Irongo. Myra Muthoni and Kenneth Irongo. Karibuni sana. Yes, let's celebrate the parents and the little children that are coming to be dedicated this morning. Wow, karibuni sana, karibuni sana. Yes, let's encourage them. Yes, some of them might be their first time. Yes, wonderful. It's a blessing to have you. Um, we might have relatives or friends or family friends who've come to witness and celebrate with these family members, and you're here. Yes, any family members, friends, parents that are here to stand with them, anyone who would like to celebrate. Yes, let's celebrate. Oh, wow. Let's celebrate them. Wow, Asante. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you for being with us at Trinity Chapel Church, Psalms 127 verse 3 says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are actually a reward from him. So our children, dear parents who are here, are a gift from God. They are a gift from God. So actually God entrusts us to steward our children, bring them up in his ways, and also nurture them. But we need to recognize that they belong to God. And so it's only appropriate that we as parents get to dedicate our children back to God. I would like to emphasize that as a church, we don't 
baptized. This is not a, a baptism. This is a dedication. We believe as a church that baptism is done in response to re repentance and faith in Jesus. When an individual consciously makes that decision and then you are able to be baptized. So today, there are four commitments that the Lord is reminding these lovely parents that are here with me. Yes. And also all of us as parents. Uh, that are seated here. Four commitments. And the Lord is telling us this morning that we need to continuously, yes, pray for our children. Continuously pray for your children. So make sure that you, you remember, because I will ask. Instruct your children in the ways of the Lord. You, as a parent, are supposed to set a godly example. You need to also discipline your children, yeah? So let's help these dear parents that are dedicating their little ones today to remember. Number one, continuously pray for your children. Instruct them in the ways of the Lord. Yes. Set a godly example. Yes. And then discipline your children. And it's a joy to be having uh, these parents be able to take this step this morning. And so for these dear parents that are with us this morning, I have two questions for you. And uh, if you agree, I would love you to respond with, we do. Parents, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? Yes, we do. Having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that your child may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you parents vow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide a Christian home of love and peace to raise them in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline? And to encourage them to one day trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. They do. And so the next question is for us as a congregation, as a community that they belong to. And if you agree with this, kindly respond with, we do. Finally, I ask the church members to make a vow as well. As members of Trinity Chapel Roiro, you have entered into a covenant of community. Parents have first responsibility, but parents need the help and support of the community. So I direct my question now to you, Trinity Chapel Roiro. Being members of this community, I ask now that you make the following commitment to those who stand before you on this Sunday of 10th November. So that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow, TCR, by God's help, to be faithful in your calling as members of this church and the body of Christ? To help these parents be faithful to God and to help teach and train their children in the ways of the Lord. So that they may one day trust him as Lord and Savior. And if you do agree with this responsibility, kindly respond with, we do. Thank you. Amen. And so, dear parents that are here this morning, and also this lovely one standing here, there are two scriptures that the Lord is reminding us. The Lord, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 7 says, The Lord, our God, is one. Love the Lord your God, dear parents, with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Ephesians 6 verse 4 reminds us, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Instead, Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Parents, you are to love God with all your mind, your heart, and all your soul. As you love God and one another, 
you will model your uh, you will model before your child a wonderful love for God and they will want and because of this they will want to know God and so I encourage us to be able to do that I welcome Reverend Steve to take us through stand up and uh, um, even in a stretching of hands and in a time of intercession that we pray for these children even as we dedicate them. Can I ask the pastors who are here uh, to join me even as we pray for, this, for these children? Just as you stretch your hands, stretch your hands and pray for these children even as you anoint them today and even as you minister to them. Our Father and our God, we bless you this afternoon. We thank you for the gift of these children. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for who you are over their lives, that you have brought them to this world with a purpose. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help the parents to support the children to get to understand and to know the purpose that you have brought in them in this world. I pray that you will protect them. I pray that you will defend them. I pray that you will bring your grace and strength over the parents, dear Lord. I pray over them individually as parents. The Lord in areas where they need your help, they need your healing, they need your salvation, that you will provide these things in Jesus' name. The Lord God, they will be able to be open enough to hear from you. 
I pray for the marriages represented here. We know, Lord God, that marriage is a safe place and institution to bring up healthy and godly children. I pray that you will establish these couples in your love. Where there is division, we pray for restoration and unity of purpose in the name of Jesus. We pray that these marriages will be united in loving God and walking faithfully before the Lord. The Lord, you will trust these couples with resources in the mighty name of Jesus. Resources in heavenly places, in secret places, Lord, to help them bring these children up in the ways of God. And reach these families with a healthy Bible culture in the name of Jesus, that the altar of God shall not uh, uh, lack any fire in the altar in the name of Jesus, that in these homes, Lord God, scriptures will be opened, life will be declared, prayers will be answered, hope will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the community of faith where they are their parents' parents, their extended family, their e-groups and small groups where they are, and even as a church that will continue to pray and to entrust you, Lord God, to take care of these children for the glory, praise, and fame of your name. We rebuke the enemy who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, that their lives will not be destroyed. Their mental health, physical health, psychological health, even sexual health will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. But they will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. A praise, honor, and glory shall return back to God because they trust in you. And these homes shall be examples of, and a witness for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we dedicate these children to the Lord now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Let's celebrate our dear parents as they even sit down. Oh, oh, God, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a joy to see what God is doing even in our church and even in our families. We may have our seats. Every Tuesday as a church, um, as we know, we have our Tuesday prayer and Bible expository service that happens every Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m. And I want to still continue to welcome us to be part of this. Uh, if you've not attended any, at least say November and December is my month to be able to attend this prayer and Bible expository time with fellow believers. Every Wednesday and Thursday, we have BLAST. BLAST stands for Building Lives Around Spiritual Truths. And this is dedicated to our campus students and anyone who is young at heart. You are very, very welcome. So on Wednesday, it happens here at Trinity Chapel Rero from 6 to 8. And they are continuing with the story of Jonah. That is what they are focusing on. And then on Thursdays at Eden Spot, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. also, you're very, very welcome. And they are addressing, no matter what, the book of Daniel. So we welcome us to take advantage of what God is doing in our church and through our church and be part of this. Also welcome uh, your, your relatives too, you know. You might have people in campus. A moment of thanksgiving to God, as I had mentioned, we had... Uh, VBS taking place this past week and we give thanks to God because it's by his hand that it started and it ended and what God was able to accomplish through everyone that allowed him to use him to use uh, them and then we also as a church this year we've been very intentional to do evangelism every second Saturday let me see who has been doing evangelism who has been part of our I know some of us have been coming for evangelism every second Saturday. I can see some of us seated, but I hope that we were able to do it every second Saturday. So yesterday we thank God that four souls came to Christ by those who, who went out to, uh, to evangelize. I want to encourage us that when the second Saturday passes, don't pause, continue each day. Each day, the harvest continues to be plenty. Trust the Lord of the harvest to lead you. Do not be quiet and comfortable. Let's continue to share the gospel as the Lord leads us and share this good news. So we celebrate the four people who actually received their lives to Christ yesterday. 
We have baptism that is going to take place on 1st of December as we have our church day out. And so we, we want to encourage anyone who has not been baptized by immersion that you register for this at the info desk. Please take, take advantage of this early because on November 23rd at 2 p.m. Saturday, November 23rd at 2 p.m. We are going to have a baptism class happening here. So you need to register early. There's information that needs to uh, be shared to you early. So please let's take advantage. You might know someone in your e-group, someone around you that desires to be baptized. Please let's encourage them to register for this uh, on time. Trinity Chapel Roiro, it's time to give. Yes, is in God good? And so we have different ways of giving. Uh, if you have physical uh, cash, uh, we want to encourage you. Uh, if you have cash, uh, we want to encourage you to come. Uh, the ushers are ready for you to come to the front. And then also, if you're giving via check, address it to Trinity Chapel Roiro. If you're giving via our pay bill, I'm sure it's being projected at the screens. Uh, it's 761. 780 and then on account kindly designate your giving let's give thanks to god for our giving almighty father we want to thank you that indeed god you have provided you've provided oh god and indeed you've trusted us oh god to steward these finances that you've given us lord we exalt you lord we thank you that we have something to give towards uh, today oh god to give unto you oh jehovah father we thank you for providing oh god in different ways we also want to commit those who are trusting you by faith oh god to provide for them even financially god that there will be a breakthrough oh god for them in the name of jesus lord would you receive this thanksgiving in jesus name we pray amen Shukurani Kwa ya lema mbo yote Ume nitendea Sija saha wata mocha Ime kuja na wimbo Ime kuja na wimbo Wimbo ya Wimbo wangu wambo Wa shukurani Kwa ya lema mbo yote Ume nitendea Sija saha wata mocha Niyo mana nina sema Asante Asante Ya buwana Asante Moyo ni wa shukurani Asante Ya buwana 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 Asante Yote ni livyo na vyo, ulivyo ni pea, ume ni pendelea Uhai unema hii, ume ni pendelea Sijivuni kwa chochote, nilicho kifanya ila ume ni pea Yote ni livyo, yote ni livyo na vyo, ulivyo ni pea, ume ni pendelea Sijibuni kwacho Sijibuni kwacho chote Nilicho kifanya ila Iwuna ni pendelea Afra hii Umzi hii Ume ni pendelea 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 Vyote ni livyo na Vyote ni livyo na vyo Uliga ni pea
which they are singing that I cannot accompany. So, Achilia, wamejipendelea. Ile ningeweza ni chanzo cha uhai wangu ni Yesu. Ni Yesu. Ndio mimi ni baba sana. Wacheni, wacheni. We, we, we. I bind you bad. Let's appreciate our worship team. Tokeni hapo, tokeni hapo, tokeni hapo 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 tutakuwa na kaishu kidogo. Good afternoon TCR. Mkopoa? Kabisa. Thank you for coming for service. I am telling you you are in for a for a treat. We are delighted to have with us um Pastor Jennifer Ikone. Uh, Pastor Jennifer and her husband uh, Apostle Morgan uh, lead the uh, a ministry called Rebuilders Apostolic Ministries out in Delaware uh, in the US they left while Biden and they are going back while there is a tramping over uh, of of stuff um, uh, out 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 in the states uh, they've been very good friends uh, with Pastor Marion. Uh, they call themselves a sisterhood of sorts. And um, yes, because I'm easy, no more. Pastor, why don't you come up as I, as I introduce you? Munona Villa Mele. Meletua Vituzake. So, Pato, Nune Suspenders. That's a fast. That, that, that's that. <laughs> that's the first mark of he bringing. Has no clue what to say. Yeah, misawa, <laughs> misawa. Uta float too. Um, uh, Apostle Morgan and uh, and Pastor Jennifer have become our friends as a as a as a family. They are blessed with three biological children and a lot of many others um, uh, that 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 minister with them and uh, that they get to serve. Their ministry expands to not only in the states but to Nigeria, Cameroon, and South Africa, and they've been here for this is what this is your third week. Yes. This is their third week that they have been here, um, uh, strengthening uh, churches, uh, ministering to believers, and uh, we are we are getting the cream of of everything. Kabla uh, I, I want to pray for you, but I also want to commission you because of something that you did in the first service. Ladies, Waridi conference next year. Uh, uh, we are committing her as one of the speakers. Uh, uh, you, you are going to understand in a moment why. Um, so, ata mimi ni merusha yangu wapo katikati. So that, wendo jipa. Yeah, wendo jipange. Shall we stand up even as we pray for her and as she brings God's word to us? Chanzo cha uhai wangu ni yesu. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 servant to you, asking that the words of her mouth and the meditations of her heart will be pleasing and acceptable to you. 
and that they'll be impactful and life-changing for us. We are asking for a specific anointing for this moment and for this service so that, Lord God, you'd break barriers that need to be broken. You'd repair things that need to be repaired, that we would hear and we would attend to what it is that we hear, even obediently so. And even we ask for a clarity of word and speech and power, even as Pastor Jennifer ministers to us in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jennifer, as you have heard. Mombi, and my husband is the one who makes me the iconic. I was born and raised here, married to a Nigerian from the Igbo land, a very serious warrior. I call him Laingo. We met in Bible school. He was doing his, uh, thank you so much. He was doing his degree when I was doing my diploma. I was just my, in my first year. He was in his last year. And so he started overseeing my life. So during the mid-semesters when the foreigners don't have anywhere to go for the short break, he would bring me tapes by Shabak and all those big, big people to occupy my mid-semester break. And uh, when other pastors disturbed me, I reported them to him. I had nobody to report him to. 19 years down the line. Amen. I came here with a, a beautiful team. The first one is a suspenders guy. <laughs> that's the <this> team. <laughs> so that's Pastor Emmanuel Gameji from Dwala, Cameroon. He pastors a church in a city called Dwala. And all of them are welcome over there. I was with them in... A, Yes, I was with them in uh, April, in April, yes, and behind him is my beautiful baby girl, that's my niece, that's the first girl in the family, y'all, Nancy Candy Monene, this girl finished university and put the certificate in the box and went to do business, if you like, she can bake you, <laughs> yep, they've eaten her cakes. She is very good. She does flowers. You want to surprise somebody? Nandis. Yes, and uh, the next one is Florence Rita Wilson. Florence Rita Wilson. Come on, girls. Florence Rita Wilson came with me from the United States. She's in church. She teaches the little children, and she's doing such a great job. Florence is a nurse. We actually met in the hospital she works in a psych hospital where I used to work. I'm no longer there. But that's where we met and we've been daughter-mother ever since. And uh, the other one is a favor, Irene Karemi. She's shaking her head because she's short. You, you, you won't see her. Just stand up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, in, in high school, they used to call her Feb because February is the shortest month. I love you. But you see that short girl, the work she is doing on social media and, what, and training worship leaders and worshipers is taller than that. Yes. I met Irene and I led her to the Lord when she was seven years old in 1997. It has been 31 years of working with the Lord. I appreciate you, girl, and I love you. Amen. Uh, how did I get to meet you all? Through Dr. Marion. We have been friends since 1997. We met in Deliverance Church, Meru. And yes. And if you met me then, you think twice before you become my friend. I respect this woman. She became my friend and ever since we have been together. She has visited the U.S. several times. She doesn't stay long enough. Amen. So we are going to go to the word of the Lord. And uh, because we have another meeting in another place this afternoon. You're blessed today? Please help me specially celebrate the worship team. My God! Yes! 
Yes, add a shout to it. Add a shout to it. Okay. <laughs> God bless you so much. Wonderful job. I didn't want you to stop. So when I, yes, so when I saw him motioning the pastor, I'm like, no. <laughs> yes, so let's go to the word of God. Uh, first, Second Corinthians, chapter 5. Um, I'm not sure if we project the scriptures, so I'm just going to. Okay, so I do an IV, but whatever translation you have, it is more than welcome. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 20. All 21. We'll see where we stop. Those of us who came for the first service, consider yourself served a second time. And those who are coming for this service and were not in the first service, you're getting the better part of the meal. Because now we discovered what spice we didn't add. Verse 11 says, says since then... We know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to prepare men, persuade men. What we are is plain to God. And I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to co commend ourselves to you again. But are giving you opp an opportunity to take pride in us. So that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our minds, it is for the sake of our God. You cannot be a Christian and be normal. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all. And therefore all died. And he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and was raised again. Help me tell your neighbor, don't live for yourself. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. King James says, we know not another after the manner of the flesh. Though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do so no longer. So it's okay to start wrong, but don't continue wrong. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Help me tell your neighbor, you have, you have a ministry. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God was making his appeal through us, we implore you in, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Genesis chapter 1. You're there, say amen. I can work with that. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Somebody say, all the earth. So God created man, and man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, I'm... Um, Married to a man who happens to be a prince. Now, a prince in Nigeria is a son of a king. In the olden days, they, never, they didn't have, used to have what we call a country, provinces. They had territories, empires, and they were ruled by kings. And in a few cases, like in South Africa, we have a history of a woman rising as a queen. 
and it was hereditary. So in those days, and I happen now to be married in a place where they still practice that, there is a today's kind of rulership, and uh, they still maintain the traditional one, which is actually in some cases more powerful than the today's order of rulership. So they used to have kings, and every king had as his empire a territory that is marked for him. And in those olden days, the others are, happens not to have been so populated, and we didn't have the technology that we have today. Like, you know, if you're driving to Arusha, Tanzania, you know when you cross Tanzania. Because you get out of the bus, whatever you're doing, or if you're flying, when you get there, you need to prove your nationality. You need to have a passport. I think it is still so. And if you're going by bus, we had to get a trouble to Uganda twice in a bus. We had to get out, come out with our passports, and uh, prove our nationality, and be welcomed in. And we are recorded. So they didn't have that technology then. So with that, we know where Tanzania is demarcated. We know where Uganda is, where the boundaries are. We know where Kenyan boundaries are. So it's easy to know. But then, they did not that, have that technology to know. So what kings would do is to have someone who is gifted in arts. And they would take, I haven't seen one that was made with wood. Maybe they had them. And even if they're made with wood, they would overlay it with gold or clay or something, ceramic, some kind of material to make it look neat. And they would cut the image of the king. And now this image, the king will know my territory ends in, uh, I lost bearing, so I don't know where we are. But uh, <laughs> So the, a king will know my territory ends in uh, Buruburu. And they will put his image there. So the other neighboring empire knows once you see the image of this king it means this is his domain and it, they will put that image on the other end of the territory anywhere they knew there could be a threat of being encroached they will put the image so that everybody knows this empire belongs to the king who has this image that means that image that sculpture Possessed a lot of power because if it was moved, it meant war. If it was touched, it means that's an invitation for war. And now, our kings borrow from the king of kings. Because before this system came, there is a God in heaven who created the heavens and the earth. And then they, because there was no man to tend it, he now created a man in his own what? And put him on earth to tell the devil this territory belongs to God Almighty. God brought a man and a woman together, gave them children to tell the devil that these children belong to who? God brought you to this church Put you in the choir. Put you in the greatest ministry or whatever you call it. Put you in the hospitality team for you to manifest and let the devil know this department belongs to who? You protect that department with everything because you know it belongs to God. You protect those children. Pray for them. Give them a godly example because you're conscious. I am here as a representation, as an image of Lord God Almighty. So I didn't just give birth because I was fertile. I didn't just give birth because I got married and that's the next thing we expect. I gave birth because God consciously wanted his image to have dominion over this territory. And he says he created male and female, created he them to rule over the birds, the fish of and all the earth, all creation. So this world, there is no part that belongs to the devil. The seas do not belong to the devil. He happens to be clever enough to have lived with God long enough to know how he operates. 
So he can take the sea and there are places you can't step in. But it doesn't belong to him. Until the image of God realizes and steps in there to have dominion. The earth belongs to your God, my God. We are created to have dominion. So the mark of our maturity, the whole mark of our maturity, it is not how many cars we drive. I'm not against cars. It is not how many countries we visit. I'm not against traveling. It is not how many degrees and PhDs that we get. It is not how many books we write. The whole mark of our Christianity is when God knows once I put Steve in a territory and Dr. Marion in a territory, there is dominion, witches are not going to operate there. An image of mine is right there that knows what they are called to be. The hallmark of dominion is when God knows the children I have given that man and a woman, they don't need a superintendent. They don't need a police. They will be prayed through. They will be given a godly example. They are going to be counseled. They are going to be, to be taken care of. Praise the name of the Lord. Now while God set that in motion, there was an enemy called the devil. I don't praise him, but I'm not ignorant of him. I don't try to propagate his kingdom, but we shouldn't be ignorant of him, so Apostle Paul says. So when God put these things in motion, and he created man for this agenda, man was not meant to sweat. Pastor Steve, Adam was given a garden, not a farm. Do you all read your translations? Or have a critical mind. One of the two. He was given a garden. If he needed gold, it was to turn around and take a panga. He had rivers that he could wake up and enjoy himself. But sin happened and a gardener turned into a farmer. People enjoy gardening. We sweat when we are farming. Interpret <laughs> So Eve happened to have a conversation with the serpent. And God looked at this finished product that he made. Too pretty that she couldn't be made with raw materials. She had to come from a finished product. Ladies, is the volume high? <laughs> yes. And once God finished with us, we continue for him. So he stopped creation. So we continue. We decide our nails are not long enough. Our hairs are not brown enough. So she had a conversation with a serpent. And because that was the family and the institution God set in place, he gave man to be the leader. When that happened, he called it the fall of who? I don't want to understand it, but I like it. <laughs> and so when that happened, the enemy thought he had gotten God's creation. And the world of the spirit is a world of legalities. So the enemy wouldn't just take dominion from them, they had to give it to him. So he had to come with a conversation. The enemy can't just take your family, he comes with a suggestion. The day your husband came late... Do you think he was in the office? He wants to take, he wants you to hand over your imagination, your family, unto him. He first becomes with a suggestion. He can't just take it. Do you think you're being paid enough here? You see that your colleague that came, just put a signature. A conversation. A suggestion. And before you know it, you hand over your life for him. And he takes dominion. But it is not the portion of anyone sitting under the voice of God today in the name of Jesus. So while the enemy thought that he was winning, before the creation of the world, so Revelation 13, 8 says, the Lamb of God was slain when? Before the foundations of the world. So before Eve had a conversation, before the fall of man, before they were given a time out of, out of Aden, 
God had already put plants in place. When I come to worship God, I don't remember the kind of makeup I'm wearing. I don't remember the kind of dresses I'm wearing because I serve a God who saw the mistakes I'll make, the sins I will commit, and he put a great economy and a plan in place to make sure I am rescued. So when I come to church and I lose myself before God, there's a time I came drunk. There's a time I was as high as a kite. There's a time I was so depressed. You have no clue where he got me from. Let me shout. Let me holler for him because before I got there, he made plans to make sure I am rescued. Before the foundations of the world, he put plants in place. Help me tell your neighbor your mistakes, your sins, your mishaps, they are not a surprise to God. It's not a crisis. Okay, say that with audacity. It's not a crisis. Is that a license to sin? No. Because even when we sin, when we miss it, the enemy's agenda is to pull us away from God. He's disappointed with you. He, know, he has done so much for you. Look at the pastors he gave you and you keep sleeping back again. Look at the teachings that are in this house. Look at how much they care for you. You don't come to church, somebody follows with a text by evening. Look, you, you are disappointment. You missed it. You've gone so far. Shut up, devil. There is nothing the enemy can do about your mistakes. At the end of the day, there is nothing he can do about your mistakes. So I'm talking to you that feels you have gone so far. In the economy of grace, there was a restoration plan that was put in place before the foundations of the world. Come back to the Father. This is the reason of his nails. This is the reason for being pierced on the side. That even no matter how deep we go, he still can reach us. We can still come back. Every job you apply, they ask you for something called a resume. They want to see where you have worked, how long you worked, how you performed, why you left, why you fired. Did you get promoted? Because they want to know who they are hiring. Before they marry us, they have a figure in mind. Some of us used to be eight, now we're 11. They have a color in mind. My husband wanted a tall guy, he realized after I do. Everybody has a line of qualifications in what they want. God is the only person who says, come as you. High as a kite. I don't care where you have been. All that God cares is that you. Help me tell your neighbor, come. Come on, say it with audacity. Say it again. He's the only God who says, come as you are. How hard can it be? A God who doesn't ask me, where have you been? What have you been doing? He says, so long as you have come. And you commit to me changing you. I could make you afresh. So God put plans in place. To make sure what happens in Genesis 3. Has been corrected on the cross. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the resurrection morning. We wouldn't be seated here today. It is because of that sacrifice. And that blood we can gather together here. From all corners of Kenya. All corners of the world. And we are still family. One blood. So, God is cognizant that in as much as he set the plan of the cross in place, man is conceived in sin, born in sin. So he is very cognizant of the family where you come from. He knows the foundations of the family. I was born in a family where my grandfather was a witch. No, I'm not talking of the ones the neighbors talk about. I'm talking of the one that he carried to the market and put it and arranged like potatoes and mangoes. So he was known. So when you go to school, you've made your hair, you're only 11 years old, your image means a lot, and you're feeling hot. And someone points you and says, her grandfather is a witch. Self-esteem. God knows that. 
He understands that it's not automatic that you'll be born in this, you, you just get out of these places. He understands where you are born. He understands that after you were born, things happened to you, things were done to you, molestation came, experiences came, some of us had to drop out of school, educate us back, ourselves back to school, some of us ended up with the wrong man. By the time we realized we are in a second or third marriage, God knows that. And so Paul says, God in his infinite wisdom, in his infinite mercy, incomprehensible love that I cannot understand up to today, put mechanisms in place. And he said, here is the solution. It's called the cross. It's called Christ Jesus. So you are born here. Can I get 10 people again? One, two, three, four, five here and five here. God bless you, sir. You're here again. Well, I won't, I won't say young people because everybody is young in this church. So I understand. All right. Four. Four. Number five. Okay, five. Oh, I was about to call you. <laughs> so God says, we are born in this. Oh, it falls on you again. No, don't move. <laughs> there must be a reason for a double portion. So you are born in this family. Here, this is just an illustration. We are not speaking it into existence. And just in case it has happened, here comes the solution. The Lord God Almighty. So born in a family where grandfather, grandmother, and great, 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 and the greatest towards the back, they all worshipped idols. Or they were in church, which actually I've come to discover religion is more dangerous than just being lost. Because religion, they think they know. And when you don't know and you don't know that you don't know is a compound problem. <laughs> it is dangerous. It is dangerful. So this is a family where we, st we stem from. This is a family which has... Very crazy, demonic foundations. All is a family that is well to do. We were ministering to a couple. Well, they're in their, going in their 60s, 70s, mid 60s now. And the problem in the family was that their great grandfather went and serviced an altar with one of his sons. And they are the richest in the community. Four or five generations down the line, they are enjoying money, but nobody can enjoy marriage. People are not living up to 60 because there is an altar that still asks for blood. These things are real. I do not preach the devil, but I want to know how you operate because the enemy you know cannot take you by surprise. So some of them is not just witchcraft. Maybe it's money that is disturbing them. I have counseled a boy who got into addiction because the moment he turned 18, which they call adult, I don't know who taught them, they say when you're 18, you're an adult. I have one in my house. I still have to remind her to wake up the right time. That's who they call adult. The devil is a liar. Syndrome for Lizzo. So, <laughs> we are parents as long as we are alive. They are children as long as they are. And they are always welcome home. So when he turned 18... He got a car, got a gun. Hmm. Who gives an 18-year-old a gun for a birthday gift? And this is how addiction set off. 44 years down the line, he's seated in front of a clinician and he doesn't know what to do with addiction. It didn't stem from trouble. It did not stem from lack of school fees. It stemmed from money. The enemy will use anything to ground families. But Paul says, it doesn't matter where you were born. There is a family called the family of God. The Christ Jesus that was hung on the cross is our firstborn in this family. Mm. And it, <laughs> yeah, you all feel good. <laughs> and in this family, why they were born, what they were born into no longer affects them. 
What is the secret? It is not the degrees they have. It is not the cars they drive. It is not who they married. It is not who and where they got into. It is the cross. So he says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, if any man is in Christ Jesus, not with, in Christ Jesus. What's the closest example I can give? Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Can you see it? Do you know you have it? Is it working? That is what is called being in Christ. Where he wears you as a vessel. So if you are in Christ Jesus, all the things are passed away. Here, everything is new. So God did not take me as broken as I am. He did not take me as high as I was and patched me up. I can make a viraka. No, he made me a new creation. He uses the word creation because everything that God made, he made it from nothing. Mm. He made it from what? So God does not need the raw materials to make me anew. Because he can work with? I came bearing sin. I came bearing shame. I came bearing depression. God could work with uh, nothing. So if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. So where he comes from, maybe girls do not get married. Something is happening to church today. <laughs> Maybe in that family, girls don't get married. They are pretty. They can have all the money. But they are counting 36, 40, 45. Nobody has said hello as pretty as they are. But because of this new creation being in Christ, it no longer affects him because he is no longer tied to that foundation. He is a new creation. If they say here, by the time you hit 60, you are taking sugar and diabetes medication. It is no longer his portion because he is now in Christ. So if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new. And the Bible says any man. Who is any? From Ukambani? From Meru? From Kikuyu? From Chuka? From Kem... From Cameroon, from Uganda, educated, poor, rich, it doesn't matter. Grace is the equalizer. That's how we could miss it in school until grace. That's how we could miss it at 15 until grace. Mm. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is what? A new creation. Born out of wedlock, born out of inlock, born when you're planned, born when you're <laughs> wanted or unwanted and they need to remove that word unwanted. I have couples we have been praying for for nine years. They have all the money, all the businesses and they don't have children. So God planned for that child to get there. And if nothing else, that child should be protected. Am I endorsing sin? No. But if that was not the case, if that was the criteria, you are the wrong person preaching to you. I came when a boy was expected. I came, I had the audacity to be left-handed. I came, I had the nerve to be a preacher. Because every auntie, every uncle, they had put plans in place and gotten... Papers for me to apply for nursing because they thought I could make a very good nurse because I was a house help for three years. So they thought I could take care of children and the elderly very well, I'll make a very good nurse. They didn't know I was in the exam room. Whatsoever God puts in your hands to do, you do it with all. Because my empire, your empire when God gives you insignificant assignment is God. The one the pastor doesn't see. The one Dr. Marion doesn't see. The one your leader doesn't see. God does what? So if you're cleaning the toilets, you clean with all? 
with all diligence. So whether you are planned or not, whether you are needed or not, once you come to in Christ, you are a new creation and the foundations do not affect you. They don't dictate your future. And that's why they call it background. It's on the back and it's on. So help me tell your neighbor. Oh, that's good. Neighbor, your background is on your back. Don't turn back. Tell them your background is on the ground. Don't bend. The outcome, once you come to in Christ, the outcome of your life is no longer dependent on where you are born, your background. It is dependent on your choices. I'm speaking to a young person who is excusing themselves to continue doing revelation, the one that comes from Meru, because that they used to eat it. <laughs> yeah, some people got it. <laughs> You're no better. You get to a place and continue. <laughs> one evil plant like that. That plant you can have you can harvest it for 50 years. It just keeps bending and producing. You want to continue drinking and say it is in the family? Once you're in Christ, your decisions determine your future. So be careful the choices you make, they determine, they set the precedence for your future. You are not beating your wife because you have anger issues in the family. You are now in Christ. You are not operating as a lion in the house because we have that thing in our family. It's a decision. You are not... <laughs> why are people laughing? You are not <laughs> talking sanity out of your husband because in our family, we are outspoken. That's how you outspeak your marriage out. In Christ, it's a decision. Oh yeah, I almost wrecked it. <laughs> so in this, in Christ... We are a new creation. So once you, you are in Christ and you become a new creation, you have a threefold dimension kind of a Christian living. Now those who are writing, I'm about to behave like a teacher. The threefold dimensions of Christian living. Number one is regeneration. Help me tell your neighbor, regeneration. When you see R-E on a word, re-read, re-do, revise, it means you're doing it a second. Because in Genesis, we were given dominion to rule over the earth, rule over the family. Something happened in between, so we need to go back to where we were. So we start with regeneration. You must be born again. You must be born again. Trust me, outside there is death. Outside there, God cannot defend you. And if the devil told you you need to clean yourself before you come to God, he is a liar. You come to God so that he can clean you. You can't clean yourself enough for God. You must be born again. Now, in the first service, we had an argument, a, a very holy argument to decide which hand, what do we call this? The back of the hand. And what do we call this? Oh, second service agrees on one thing. Tomato, tomato. It's the same thing. So regeneration is two-faceted. You can't work with one and ignore the other, right? Just like the back of your hand and the palm of your hand. You can't decide I don't want this one because it's black. You can't decide I don't want this one because it's too tender. Or it has been bruised. The two have to work together. So it's one whole thing to make with two sides. One side of regeneration is that you're born again. That depends on God. The other one is perpetual regeneration, and I hope I'm correct theologically to use that word, where you are being changed as Christ is being formed in? Come on, say it with audacity. As Christ is being formed in? 
The Christ that says that he did not hold the scripture we read, the sins of men against them. One came and died for all, not holding the sins of men against them. Because back here where he was born, there is an uncle who ensured you don't go to school. There is an auntie who went to a Karumanzela to make sure these girls' marriages are tied and they never get married. How do you go back to that auntie now that you have a ministry? If you do not have perpetual regeneration and Christ is formed in you, who does not count the sins of the auntie against her? So you are transformed to learn how to forgive. Where we don't forgive people because they apologize, we forgive them because it, it is our nature. And you have a, if you have a problem forgiving people before they, are, they say they are sorry, get married. <laughs> Capos, is the volume enough? Where we do not give in this place out of abundance, we give out of her. Because the same, same auntie who wanted to tie your life, tomorrow because there is no peace for the wicked, and you harvest what you planted, their children are not going to go well, and they are going to require you to pay their school fees. He said, hallelujah. <laughs> so if Christ is not formed in you, who doesn't count the sins of the auntie against her, but you come back as a, as a regenerated person, a fresh person. Here we don't forgive. Here we forgive. There we love because we are loved. Here we love because it's a command. <laughs> Somebody say maturity. Somebody say maturity. So we get to where we know everything that God gives us. Everywhere he puts us, it is for service. The anointing he places on our heads, on our birds. <laughs> the education that he has allowed us to, he has enabled us to acquire. The positions that we have, it is all for God's. It is for service in the kingdom of God. We enjoy the things of, of the world. We enjoy the things that are good for our lives. A car make, facilitates your life. It makes it easy. I've been here. I can't remember a night I have slept for four hours. We're in the vehicle overnight. Preach, get into the back. You are preaching in Meru. Friday, you're in the vehicle. Kenya cinema. And then four o'clock, go take a nap, wake up, go back to me and preach. Imagine if I had a jet that was only taking 30 minutes. So I'm not against the soft life. It makes things easy. But we enjoy these things, but we don't make them our masters. We make them our servants. Because we enjoy the good things of the world, but with a holy indifference. We view it differently. My PhD serves my God. It doesn't serve my flesh and my pride. My clinic doesn't come to show people how I have, I have my own business. Oh, it, it takes several steps to get here. If you know, you know. And it comes to serve my God. So Jennifer, sit down. If it was not for God, you'll be farming in the village. Somebody said regeneration. We are looking at the three, four dimensions of Christian living. Number two is reconciliation ministry. Reconciliation ministry. Now I read a scripture in Genesis 49, 5 to 7. And Revelation 5, and that's the one I'm going to read, the other one you just read. The Bible says, and they sang a new song, that is to Jesus. You are worthy to take the lamb. That take the scroll and open his seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God. Now read with me. From every tribe, every language, and people, and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom of priests 
to serve our gods. There's a translation that says kings, priests, and kings. And they will reign on earth. And he created male and female for them to have dominion. Genesis 3 happened. The cross came. We come in Christ Jesus. We are made anew. And then we can come back as a kingdom of priests and kings to dominate. Come on. Did they say your village? Did they say just your school? Did they say your tribe? It says they will reign where? On the? So I can find myself in India. I still practice dominion. I can find myself in Afghanistan. And I still exercise what? Dominion. So any vehicle I sit on, it is not allowed to crash because I am exercising dominion. We don't die like chicken. We die the death of eagles and lions when we are done. Not even when we are tired. We go when we finish. So when I sit in a plane, it is not allowed to be taken by any turbulent. I am exercising what? A person of dominion is there. Because the birds in the air, I was given... Why would God tell us rule birds in the air? They don't sleep in our bedrooms. We don't feed them. Tell somebody to quote Tawala. So next time a bird comes mocking and it is sent from the village on in your house, just get out and walk around. Dominion. Just, just walk around and give it, intimidate it. Maybe because I stem from such foundations, I have such audacity towards, towards witchcraft. <laughs> In Bible school, I went to Nigeria. They said, be careful here on your first semester. Because they will come and take your clothes. They take it somewhere and bring it. And when you wear, things will not be the same again. I said, do this know, this one's know where I was born. We ate it. We didn't know that's what we were eating. We wore them. We didn't know that's what we were wearing. So three weeks after that, I found the same top on top of my bed. I did not wash it. I wore it and went to class. I'm still in my right mind. Because the devil is under my foot. We perish for lack of knowledge, not because the enemy is more powerful. So Jacob has a son called Levi. And his brother. When their sister was taken, in their anger, they went and destroyed a people who they didn't have to destroy. They had had an, a, an agreement with them. So and, and, unless they had broken their agreement, they, had no, they, were, they just provoked themselves. You know, we provoke ourselves. Just sit down in a family and decide, I am 15. Let me try this thing called sex. We just provoke ourselves. So, so and so just doesn't like me. Let me go and fight. Let me set this thing up. We just provoke ourselves in our flesh. And Jacob, when talking to these sons, he even says, let me not be found in their counsel. Do you know what it means for a father to pronounce that? It is a curse. But that is only operational until the cross. Because when we come to realize, our mistakes don't become our end. So when God comes to pick one of the sons of Jacob to become priests and serve in the tabernacle, who does he pick? The very condemned Levi. Because once we come here, our mistakes on that side don't become our end. Our mistakes on that end don't dictate our future because the cross has happened. So he gave us the ministry of reconciliation after reconciling us to who? Reconciling us to who? Reconciling us to himself so that now we can come back and be able to represent him. He restored us to himself, reconciled us to himself. Now we are given the ministry of reconciliation. To go back and pick the ones we left there and tell them there is another family. He is, now he knows how to do the job. Come on, give him a hand. We tell them there is a family here. When you come on this side, things here don't affect you. The ministry of what? Now the ministry of reconciliation is the ministry of evangelism. 
the ministry of being a, a, an intermediary, an in-between. And when God speaks about it, he says the harvest is ready and the laborers are and in the first service, we agreed with the men that they have to learn labor from us. So I have three. Now, in now nowadays, they have, in, they have introduced what they call epidural. But in those days, and I happen to have gone through that because I wanted to prove I'm an African woman. <laughs> Too much ginger sometimes. <laughs> you have been pregnant for how many months? And then you get into labor. God doesn't come and stro stroke your ego and say, I've seen how much you have labored for this territory. I see how much you have fasted. Oh, ministry is going to be easy. No, he pricks you with labor pains. And you go through it. And then he tells you, you the nurses tells you, we are going to let you know when you can push. So 10 minutes until it's 10, is it 10 or 8? Which CM? If, Lord, it has been so long. So, <laughs> until you have dilated enough, you are not allowed to do what? Because you could rupture the baby's head. Because the baby is not ready to come out yet. Meaning you are feeling the pains, but it depends on the baby when to come out. The audacity. <laughs> so when God says the laborers are few, it means most of us are just walking out and doing evangelism just because pastor said so. But we must be methodical where we pick a cousin and a nephew. We pick an auntie and an uncle. We pick a co-worker and we brood on them. We brood on them. I'm not saying take ages. You don't have to take nine months. But make sure you are methodical and you follow divine protocols to do evangelism. You are brooding. You've been brooding on this soul. And then you get into labor pains. And then eventually, as soon as in the spiritual you are dilated enough, the Holy Spirit says it is time now to push. Pray until something happens. And then by the time you are communicating with them, you have been brooding in prayer. You have been going through the labor pains of fasting and doing this. And the souls are very important. We can't just come to them. You can't pressurize. Evangelism. <laughs> you can't photocopy. And then God says, push. And by the time you come, the, fertile, the ground is fertile. And you bring them into the fold of Christ Jesus. Somebody say labor. So it makes me to be cognizant, Dr. Mariam. That when I meet every person that I meet, I sit with them in the bus. I am working with them. They are my bosses. They are my subordinates. They are my workers. All I work for them. I give birth to them. They are my sisters and brothers. Whoever it is, so long as it's the image of God that God brings you away. I am cognizant that God created me in Christ Jesus to look for a vent to reach that person. I am created as a channel. Reconciled to God. And now God using me to reconcile the world back to. So God forbid that the trumpet sounds today. And a co-worker shouts from hell. Why didn't you tell me about your God? And the father looks at you saying, saying son you sang in church. You preach very beautiful messages. Why didn't you come tell me about God? I am dying here. You have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Talk to them, plant a seed. Talk to them, plant a seed. The potency of this word doesn't need anything. You plant, God will cause the growth. So somebody's promising me that the co-workers are going to hear about God. The neighbors are going to hear about God. Family is going to hear about God. You speak to them, leave the consequences to God. And when you speak to them because you have been brooding as a laborer, expect them to be pushed out. I expect it. In fact, I get shocked when they don't say I want to get born again. I expected it that much. Come on, who backs me? So 
So refuse to meet people. Refuse for God to bring people your way. And the first thing you think about is yourself. It's a soul that is valuable to God. I refuse to meet young people. And the first thing I think, oh, potential husband. So the first thing I think of how I change my hair next week. I'm going to wear a longer heel. Those who still can do that, we are past that stage. I'm going to change my nails. Because that's the first thing that came to our mind. I have met people married to big men of God, women of God. How did they meet? The other one went to preach to the other. You went to reach out. You didn't know you were reaching your own prayer answer. But imagine if such a person went to them and thought they thought, oh, potential husband. And they missed it completely. That's how you, they would have missed preaching to their own spouses as ordained by God. I refuse to meet people and just think about myself. The first thing that should come out of my mouth is my God. I'm not saying we don't meet on professional platforms. But trust me, in between there is a way to weave God in it. We work in a more dangerous place where the, you sign. I will not bring my religion to the workplace. I sign it with such audacity because they said religion. I don't bring religion. I bring a relationship. The last one, our time is up, is ambassadors. Somebody say ambassadors. Paul finishes by saying, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We are therefore, when you see the word therefore, English teachers, grammar teachers, when you see therefore, that means after a certain understanding. That means whatever is about to be said, was, there's a, there was a precedent that was set. Say, so therefore, we are Christ what? Ambassadors. An ambassador is someone who works in a country, but from a different country, to represent his what? So he is an ambassador. Now that he is in Christ Jesus, he represents this kingdom of heaven. Sometimes the battle will become so strong and he will come to his kindred. He will come to his sisters and you say, my family, eh? we have something that is dealing with us. Help me pray. There are entities that are disturbing my family. In my workplace, be it a bank or anywhere, or in my hospital, I have an issue. Let's brood on it in prayer because sometimes you need that fellowship. You need that synergy. You need to connect with others. And we hold the horns of the altar and we pray. And as he is going back, as he is going back to the territory, you are backing him up in prayer. And you're saying, Father, as he is going to his family, as he is going to that business, as he is going to his sisters, we pray that they are going to come back to God. He is very cognizant. I, I like he is so fast. <laughs> He is so cognizant that when God put me in this office, there are people that will not meet another evangelist. They have not been to church. They won't go to church. We like it or not, there are people who won't come to crusade. There are people who won't come and sit here, but they will be in the bank. They will come as customers. They will come as patients. They will come as clients. And God put you there as an ambassador. Your signature and the stamp means they can go to that country. And he says, stamped. Yes, put your hands together. And then he is cognizant, no matter how many souls I win per week, they are not enough. Some are still perishing. We don't get tired. That one has come to the fold. Oh, now he is running. He's even getting excited about it. <laughs> and he says, there is a country that I have come to know. Here, sisters get married the right, the right way. Here, girls don't... Yes, if she was quick. <laughs> girls don't just get pregnant anyhow. Here, we don't use our beauty to intimidate people. We use our beauty to show the splendor of our God. We don't walk in stilettos because we want to cut walk. No, we holy walk. You see, in that, <laughs> in that country, marriages are blessed. 
people get to last. We stay together until death do us part. Because our manual is the Bible. What is the secret? It is not where you come from. You see in between here, there is a cross. And you take her back home. Yes, yeah, somebody celebrate. Check, check. Oh, we are back on air. So, <laughs> and my sister is 60 something. So there were such gaps between birth. Last Friday, we came together for the first time. I am talking of a family dealt with by witchcraft, dealt with by addiction. Dealt with by everything called immoral. But we held hands and for the first time I realized all of my mother's ch children are born again. <laughs> One of them took 20 years. Some of them appeared in church because it's a funeral or a wedding in the family. But we were holding hands. Praying and everybody saying amen, not as a cultural thing, as a Christian thing. But because they actually are in God, they understand what is happening. It is possible. Somebody say, nobody missing? Nothing missing. So go back and forgive that cousin. Go back and forgive that auntie. Because trust me, when we appear in heaven, when the trumpet sounds, those things will be very minute. You think you miss them because they troubled? You miss them enough? Try missing them for eternity. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much for preaching with me. Yes, give them a hand. The first point we saw is that you must be born again. You have to go through the regeneration. A good life is possible in God. A successful life is possible. Money is not the difference. There are people perishing because they are rich. Grace is the game changer. Salvation is the game changer. Marriages are not kept by beauty. I'm not saying it's not important. But grace is a replicant. Grace is what carries us. And you're saying, I want to come to the Lord. I want to get born again. I don't want to make assumptions and assume everybody here is born again. Every head bowed and we are praying. You are saying, I want to say yes to God. I want to have this regeneration. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be born again. Again, lift your hand and I'll pray with you. Counting? You want to say, I want to come to Jesus. I want to give my life to Christ. I'm short, but I still can see that far. I want to come to Christ. It is a major decision in your life. It means heaven. 
Yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, somebody celebrate. Somebody celebrate. Somebody celebrate. Somebody else join him. You, you, you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to say yes to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pastor Steve, I'm assuming when I saw somebody going there, they're doing what is supposed to be. God bless you. Doing a great work here. Someone else is saying, my life after you have preached, I've, I just discovered I have gone so far. I've fallen so far. I have lost track of my assignment. And I want to say, yes, God, I want to come back to my duty post. Maybe I've been serving in a department without the, being cognizant that I am actually a conduit of reconciliation. Probably I was the one causing the conflict. It doesn't matter where, it, whatever category. Or you're saying in my marriage, you just say something that struck a chord. I have gone so far. I want the grace of restoration. I want to come back to report back to duty. I will lift your hand and I'll pray with such a person. God bless you. God bless you. I'm saying hands. You want to say, God restore me. God restore me. God restore me. God bless you. God bless you. God restore me. Bring me back. Bring me back. There is no need for shame. No need for shame. The people you are afraid of are not suffering with you. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every hand lifted. I thank you for their vulnerability, their sincerity to say yes to God, that I want to come back to my duty post. I want to come, come back and be the Christian I'm supposed to be, the wife I'm supposed to be, the husband I'm meant to be, the mother, the father I am meant to be. Restore me back to my duty post. I want to sing in the choir as one who is aware I'm on assignment. I want to serve in the hospitality team, whatever, in the main department, whatever it is, like one who is cognizant, I am on duty. I want to handle my neighbors like I'm cognizant. I am their passenger. The way I treat them could mean they come to heaven or not. Thank you for the grace of restoration. Thank you for bringing us back. Thank you for the economy of grace that allows us to come back, draws us back, even when we go too far. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your name. Thank you. Thank you, God. Nina songea, Baba Nina songea, Chini yamigo yaku, Baba Nina songea, Nina songea, Nina songea, Chini yamigo Baba Nina Songe, Nina Songe, Nina Songe, Nina Songe, Chiri, Yamigo Yako, Baba Nina Songe. Somebody saying, I have been sick. My family has been going through issues. You don't even know how you made it to church. You had to encourage yourself. Everything around you said, watch online. You still pushed your way to church. You carried a heavy heart. I don't know what it is, but God knows. That's why he brought it. I want to pray with such a person. I need divine intervention. God is not about to, to, to make, allow you walk out the way you say the way you came, the same way you came. You're sick in your body. Yes, I'm seeing hands. I'm seeing hands. Came here with a heavy heart. I don't know what it is from, but God says, I'm here for you. Songea katika kiti chaneema. Songea, songea, songea. In your spirit, songea. By lifting your hand, you're saying, God, I come. Yes. God, I come. Anybody close to such a person, I want you to hold their hands or put your hand on their shoulder. Chini, 
of Jesus. Every sickness right now is healed by the stripes of Jesus. AD is healed. Every infirmity broken. Every onslaught of the enemy severed right now in the name of Jesus. Every condition turned around in the name of Jesus. And nobody walks out the way they came. Not because there's a big preacher in town. Not because there's a visiting preacher in church. But because God is here. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much. I love you all.